Hello Revit users and ambitious architects or engineers. Today I'm launching a new a saga of Revit Families Creation Masterclass. So let's begin with three different kinds of families that we do have in Revit. So these are system families, loadable families and in-place families. Most elements that you create in your projects are system families or loadable families. Loadable families can be combined to create nested and shared families non-standard or custom elements and create in use using in-place families. So system families create basic elements that you would assemble on a construction site. For example, walls, roofs, floors, ducts, pipes, system settings which affect the project environment and include types for levels, grids, driving sheets and viewports are also system families. System families are predefined in Revit. You do not load them into your projects from external files, nor do you save them in locations external to the project. Another category is loadable families. So loadable families are used to create the following. Building components that would usually be purchased, delivered and installed in and around a building, such as windows, doors, casework, fixtures, furnitures or plannings. System components that would usually be purchased, delivered and installed in the end around the building, such as boilers, water heaters, air handlers, plumbing fixtures. Some annotation elements that are routinely customized, such as symbols and title blocks. Because of their highly customizable nature, loadable families are the families that you most commonly create and modify in Revit. Unlike system families, loadable families are created in external RFA file and imported or loaded in your project. For loadable families that contains many types, you can create and use type catalogs, which allow you to load only the types that you need for a project. The third category of Revit families are in-place families. Those in-place elements are unique elements that you create when you need to create a unique component that is specific to the current project. You can create in-place geometry so that it references other project geometry, resizing or adjusting accordingly if the reference geometry changes. Creating an in-place element involves many of the same family editor tools as creating a loadable family. In order to create a new Revit family, you need to create a new family project. So you should go to the Create New and then select Family. It will show you different options for a uh, which you can select a different template for a different category, a different type of element you want to create. For example, there are templates set up for windows, there are templates set up for sites, planting, parking, and all of those different kind of uh, families you would want to create. So in this case, let's start creating a metric generic model, which uh, is a generic uh, in general suits uh, bunch of a different elements you would want to create. So in this case we will create let's say a table. It will open up this kind of a window and here in the reference reference plan, reference level, we're gonna create a table base. Let's press on extrusion, let's draw a circle, let's copy it, let's say over here, here and over here. Let's hit Finish edit mode. Now, if you open up a 3D view, we have these four legs. If you select all of them, we have those end dragging uh, triangles over here. Now, let's create, let's say, a table. So let's go back to the create, uh, let's select extrusion and just simply draw a table over here. Now, I want to change uh, change the elevation. So I would, would need to do just go like this. If you would open a side view, you can align it. So this is a simple way how you can create, uh, let's say, table, a different kind of element. But now let's dig let's dig more into a deeper level of family creation. Let's create the same table, but in a proper way, using reference planes, dimensions, and a bit more parametric. So, before we create the reference planes, I want to just explain a bit about those two planes that are already here when you open up a family template. So, if you select those uh, planes, you will see that they de defines the origin. Uh, 
it means that the intersection point of those two planes are the point by which uh, this family will be loaded into the project. I hope it, it does make sense. And now let's create additional four reference planes for uh, my table legs. Those additional planes will uh, adjust the position of my legs by the dimensions I uh, parameters by the dimensions that I create from my origin planes. And what I mean by that, for example, if my leg is going to be in the intersection point of those two planes, and if I'm going to change, let's say, like this, it will move my leg over here as well. So once I have those reference planes created, uh, let's create an extrusion. Go to the extrusion, let's select the circle, and let's draw it somewhere over here, let's say. If you want to have a, a center mark visible, you need to select the circle and click this mark. Now it will open, it will show you the center mark of it. Now use the align tool, AL short key, and align it to the reference plane. Don't forget to lock it like this. And hit OK. Now let's redo the process for the whole four legs. We want to create them individually so we would have more control of every single of those legs. Now, all of those legs are created, and you'll see if I move this, let's say, thousand, it will move as well those uh, legs. So now I want to create a um, parameter for those dimensions. So what, to create the parameter, you can simply select the dimension line, and under the label dimension, you can create a parameter, or you can simply go on the family types and create a new parameter. It will open up this window where you can choose the different parameters for Revit for this family. So let's go and uh, let's understand what these parameters means. So family parameter, it obviously cannot appear in schedules or tags, uh, they control variable values of the family, such as dimensions or materials. They are specific to the family. For example, Family parameters such as width and height may be used in door family to control the dimensions of different door types. A, fam a family parameter can also be used to control a parameter in a nested family by associating the parameter in the host family to the parameter in the nested family. Shared parameters are parameter definitions that can be used in multiple families or projects. After you add a shared parameter definition to a family or project, you can use it as a family or a project parameter. Because the definition of a shared parameter is stored in a separate file, not in the project or family, it is protected from change. For this reason, shared parameters can be tagged and scheduled. Another option is instance parameter. An instance parameter will only affect the object or objects you currently have selected. These parameters show up immediately on the properties dialog once an item is selected. A type parameter can be accessed only when you select an item and click Edit Type. For example, if I click Edit Type, those parameters are type parameters. And in here, I see the instance parameters. Let's create a horizontal, horizontal uh, offset for legs. Let's make it an instance parameter and we can change the discipline of it. We can change the type of parameter. In this case, it's going to be a length parameter. And we can group them into a different groups, constraints, identity data, or any other over here. Let's group it under dimensions. Is it OK? And here we have a new group created with our new parameter. It is recommended to never use a zero values as a default value, so I recommend you to change it, let's say to 300, and hit OK. Now, if we select a different uh, dimension lines, we can select our parameter create like this. Let's create the same for a vertical offset for those legs over here. Let's go to the 
family types, create new parameter, vertical offset, X, instance parameter, hit OK. Let's make it 500. Select those two, vertical offset. Here you go. Now we have legs created. But I also would love to have a parameter value that I would uh, could change the diameter of these legs. So let's go into one of those legs to edit extrusion. And over here, let's create a dimension uh, diameter like this. Now let's select it and create a new parameter. Diameter to four legs instance. Here. Now, if I'm going to go to the FMAF family types, and for example, I'm going to change diameter for legs, option to let's say 100, I'll hit OK, you'll see it will change the parameter of these legs. Don't forget to always check if everything works, as I'm doing right now. Seems OK. Now let's go to the 3D view to take a look how it looks. We would also want to create a parameter for the height of this of this table, right? So let's go to the elevation view. Now let's create additional reference plane, which will describe the height of our table legs, and create a dimension line for it. I want to note that this is quite important uh, because here the reference level and reference plane is overlapping each other. So it is better if you would use not reference level but reference plane. So use tab and select the right one. So let's create a dimension line. Use tab to select reference plane. On the left on the left corner you'll see that it, is, it shows you reference planes. Let's create a dimension. Let's create a new parameter. Height for legs. Instance parameter. Hit OK. And now what you need to do is to align all those legs. So use align tool and don't forget to lock it. Like this. Now let's take a look if it works. Hyperlex, let's say 800. Here you go. It works perfectly. Now let's create the table base over here. So we can go to reference reference level, but in this case, we can use a reference. If you let's say create table base, we can create a name for this reference plane. Now we can go to create set reference work plane as table base over here. Now we will create a table base uh, on that particular level. Let's go to extrusion. Let's create a rectangle. And now let's use, wait a minute. Let's create additional reference planes as well. It's always recommended for you to use those reference planes. It will control the table base over here. Let's create uh, dimensions. We can also create uh, an equal uh, dimension of our origin a reference plane like this. And now we can create an extrusion like this. Don't forget to log them to the reference planes. Uh, something is okay. Here you go. Now we have created our table base, but let's uh, create an additional additional uh, options over here. I'm not sure if I selected the right way, so I'm doing it again and reference plane. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, and this will describe. Uh, let's create a new parameter, 
let's see offset table base let's create an instance parameter let's create the same for this one as well let's go to the parameters offset table base 300 yeah that's perfect now we would like to create a uh, height for this uh, table base as well let's go to the elevation view again i'm going to show you that we can create a different way how you can control the height of this table as you can see when you select the solid you have this extrusion end and extrusion start for example if i type it in 300 it will adjust the height of this right or you can simply drag it down but as well here you can see there's a a uh, rectangle over here when you can uh, select a different parameter for it so we can do it for example we can create a new parameter new parameter which is going to be table base height let's create instance parameter and let's make it let's say 50 hit ok and over here you can select an extrusion end table base height here you go now let's take a look how everything works uh, height for legs let's say 700 let's say diameter of legs 100 it works perfectly here we have a table created which will uh, work in a different ways it's a parametric one we can also uh, create the materials for it the same way right we can change the visibility graphics uh, settings for it but for this moment let's just simply load it into project and here you can see the insertion point is the origin planes right here you go and if you're gonna uh, so if you select the table here you see those different instance parameters if you go to edit type you're going to see uh, type parameters so that why, that's why it was important to know the difference between these parameters so let's change the height for legs for example to just to see if it works that works perfect let's change the offset to perfect and here you go the basics of creating a family if it was helpful and informative I hope you like it and if you like it, don't forget to subscribe and see you in other videos.